Watchmen was a 12 issue limited series which ran from 1986 to 1987. It had more adult themes for a superhero comic and the writer Alan Moore got into several problems with DC over contractual issues about the book. The artwork was supplied by Dave Gibbons. The series, you could argue, dealt with a lot of adult subjects such as rape, politics, ethics, paranoia and even the fundamental principles of being a superhero while all at the same time being tied together with a very clever murder mystery at the centre of it. I won't want to spoil the surprise, but it's not the butler. In 2009, the books were brought to the big screen, and it pleased a lot of the movie-going public, even fans of the book. Well, not so much Alan Moore. Oh, hi. <laughs> Ah, <sighs> that was a joke I've already used. Anyway, last video I kind of went on a rant about Brian Singer and superhero films in general, which I want to get back to something good. I want to get back to something decent. I want to get back to comic books. And no, not this comic book. I know I really didn't talk about this when I did do a video on it, but... The size of the book is so big, and it's more of a love letter to Peter Parker than anything else, and starting off the new Superior Spider-Man, which we will be getting to in time, but I'm going to give myself a break from Spider-Man because I'm sick to death of Spider-Man. That's no joke, I really am sick to death of Spider-Man. What we are going to look at is Moloch number one, of a two-parter. Yes, there will be two parts. We open with Moloch recounting his backstory to a priest. We start where all stories start, at the beginning. We see Moloch was born a freak, and in the eyes of the world, and of course, freaks get the shaft. In school as well as everywhere else. Everyone there seems to hate him, including the girl who's his love interest. But, of course, she shuns him as well, and even goes as far as to kick his own ass. We then discover where his love of magic came from as he becomes fascinated with it and even sort of becomes popular through using it for other people's entertainment. Even the girl he likes looked like she's coming around to him but no, psych! It's a prank set up by her and her boyfriend? Said boyfriend then gets tricked and killed by Moloch who dumps the body in the bed of the girl that he hates. How, I don't know, because he's evidently taller than him, and I don't know, wrong with it. He then becomes a magician in a bigger city, but as money is scarce, he then decides to say, screw that, I'm going to become a supervillain. But then he attracts the attention of the Minutemen, and so a game begins of cat and mouse between him and the other heroes of prison, getting out, getting caught, being put back in prison again, so on and so forth. He then decides to go straight after a time, but that is broken when a girl under his employment gets pregnant by him and then aborts the baby, rather than just give birth to a monstrosity. What, have you never wanted to give birth to a monstrosity? He then goes full out evil, and that's when things get really bad, when Dr. Manhattan shows up and demonstrates his awesome power to Moloch, teleporting him straight into prison. That seems legal and totally fair, even though he was just planning out a crime and not actually doing it. The poor guy is then set straight for good and repents his sins. We then cut back to him leaving prison and him scorning at the priest. He then walks outside and we see... Dun dun dun! It's the villain of Watchmen. So what does this bring to the table that's new? Well, it's a villain story... That's about it. It's actually the only villain story that I can actually find from The Watchmen. I know they do delve into that a little bit in the actual book, but this is a separate thing on its own. This is its own separate entity. This exists outside of the actual realm of Watchmen. Yo, though, yeah, still connecting to it. I'll get to that. So, yeah, on its own, separated from the other books like Rorschach, Dr. Manhattan, and Osbend IS, 
which we know their backstories, we know how mental and messed up they are, this is a good book because it sheds some light onto why Monarch is like he is. It also gives his character a bit more depth, which the film didn't really touch upon. He was just a sad old man in an apartment who then gets killed. <sighs> And in the books, he's kind of a sad, pathetic character there as well. But we're not touched upon that as well. Here we find out why he's so sad and pathetic. We actually have some story to back up his character. Which is good. A lot of the other books don't really hit upon anything new. We know the comedian's a psycho. We know Rorschach's a psycho. We know Ozymandias is mad. And we know also that he's the villain. So what's the point in buying any of the other books over this one? Now I know that siding with DC over Alan Moore for the fact that they screwed him over on creative work is a bit strange, but like I said, he went on to bigger and better things and it's a working practice for businesses to do anyway. It's been going on for years and the only thing that was different though is the fact that it was a comic book this time and the fact that fans are diehard fans and they side with the creative work over the company any day. That's the only difference, or at least the only difference that I can see. But seriously, don't let history get in the way of a good book. It spoils your enjoyment of what you supposedly like. Am I wrong? Who knows? But still, if you like them, get them. They should be in your collection, because they're good. That's about it. But I think DC does deserve a little bit of punishment for treating Alan Moore so badly. And as a result, I have pre-programmed some Polaris missiles. They are in this Xbox controller, and I will be set them off right about now. Maybe it's a combo button. Um, well, aside from my aiming being really bad. Uh-oh. I think I'm going to have to go now. Um, that was my Moloch number one review. I'm going to go see what else I can read. And lay low for a while.